Hello, it's Richard Wilson, company from Zurich, Switzerland. I'm actually here to chair a conference of about 250 people on ultra high net worth investments and hedge funds. And the whole point of this conference is to attract more finance business to a suburb of Zurich called Pathicon, which is actually a pretty big financial center of Zurich. And um, what I'm going to speak about at the conference is about what's driving growth in the family offices. So I just wanted to give you a real quick kind of summary of what my speech um, or my topic is going to be about while at this conference and working as the chairman there. So um, first thing I'm going to talk about is the four core drivers of family office growth. Uh, this comes from me working with family offices for over seven years and also um, just recently completing 36 recorded audio interviews with single and multifamily offices all around the world for an interview series I completed and a book that I'm writing right now in family offices. So basically there's four things I've identified that are really driving the family office industry forward and just leading to global growth that I think is sustainable and is going to last for at least the next 10 years. So the first thing that's driving the growth is that many family offices used to require 30 or 50 million dollars before you could join them. And many still do, but a good percentage of them now are only requiring 10 or 20 million dollars. This is a significant difference because there are many more people in the world that have 10 and 20 million dollars rather than 30 or 50 million dollars. So it only takes a certain percentage of those family offices lowering their minimums and many clients are going to flood into those specific family offices that lower the minimums. I think this is being done because some of their costs are rising uh, due to global compliance costs, um, you know, fraud, anti-fraud compliance, anti-bribery compliance, and globally, especially with the United States regulations, the costs of compliance are definitely going up. So to cover their bases and make sure that their multifamily office model remains profitable, many people have been lowering the minimums they require from their clients to start using the family office services. Um, on top of that, the second area of growth that I've seen is that wealth management firms that used to perhaps require a million dollars of net worth from somebody are now liking to call themselves a family office by saying, well, our new minimums for a client are $10 million, or our new minimum is $20 million. Now, the reality is that 90% of their client base are these $500,000 or $1 million or $3 million clients. But it looks better if on their website they say they offer a full family office solution. I understand you know, where they're coming from and trying to convert into a family office. You know, who doesn't want to serve people that have $20 million instead of $2 million if you have the choice, right? Um, it causes a little bit of confusion in the industry because some people now say, well, you're not a family office unless you're a single family office, or you're not a family office unless you require at least $30 million from your clients. You know, who's to say what the right definition is? I think that, you know, at the very minimum, somewhere around 20 million, maybe 10 million, but probably around 20 million is what would be considered a family office if they only work with people of those sizes. There are some exceptions, though, that provide great service, even though you can have less assets uh, than 20 million. So uh, that's another area though, that's really driving the industry forward because many wealth management professionals would like to be running a multifamily office instead of a wealth management operation. So not everybody's going to succeed in converting their firm uh, up the ladder that way and becoming more high end, but some of them will and some of them are succeeding in doing so and the profitability will rise and they'll keep on reinvesting in that and attracting more ultra high net worth clients. They'll also be helping convert clients that used to maybe already work with them in a wealth management type model, and now they'll get the full suite of family office services. So that's been expanding the industry. The third thing I've identified is what I call releasing the handcuffs from bank, uh, private banking and trust uh, professionals. What's happening is lots of people that work at a large bank or trust, they have sometimes in-house money managers or in-house platform of money managers. They might have an in-house risk consultant or an in-house uh, advisor on tax, all different things that are mostly in-house, which can seem like a great thing, but oftentimes what it does is it ties the hand of the trust professional and in turn the high net worth client or ultra high net worth client. So oftentimes the very best manager, the very best tax advisor for that ultra high net worth person is outside the trust or outside the private bank and it's either a pain in the ass to go and work with that person or it's more expensive or it just causes a lot of paperwork and headaches to even try to do it. So it just doesn't happen very often. So the person's kind of handcuffed to what the large private bank or trust tells them they're allowed to do, right? Uh, well, what often happens is that an ultra high net worth person 
maybe it's 30 million, 50 million, 100 million dollars, and they just get frustrated by this process. They like the person at the trust or the private bank. They like how they pay attention to them and serve them well. They like their ideas and their intelligence, but they're pissed off at the private bank because they're getting such poor service and not really having an open architecture model where they can go and use the absolute best fund manager and the absolute best expert in every case needed. So what happens is oftentimes that person becomes the lead client of a new multifamily office and it can be a single family office, but nowadays more people launch the multifamily office model instead, I believe. And what they'll do is help that trust or bank employee start their own multifamily office. They might pay some extra fees those first two or three years, but they might get an ownership stake in that multifamily office as a result of that. And in that way, the bank or trust employee is now independent and they can make the best decisions for that ultra high net worth professional, which might get more than that one or two percent return back that the family office is gonna cost them so that they uh, can do better financially long-term. The fourth area of growth is just a growing global wealth and a growing awareness of family offices. I've recently had the opportunity to interview family offices based in Dubai, Israel, Singapore, Australia, Brazil, Switzerland, Monaco, Luxembourg, the United States, Canada, all over the place, and they're growing all over the world. Um, not only are more people becoming uh, millionaires every day and becoming worth 20 million, 30 million, 50 million dollars plus every single day more than ever before. But on top of that, family offices are being in the news, the media more often, and people are just becoming more aware of what the family office model means and what the benefits are of using it. So those are the four core drivers of growth I've seen in the family office industry. Again, it's Richard Wilson, coming from Zurich, Switzerland, and we'll see you again soon.